So I ran docker compose build progress plane and pull just for good measure. Ah, let's see. So it wasn't, it took less than three minutes. Um, let's see, so task worker. Let's see, let's, let's, can we go, can we go to the beginning? Nope. <laughs> we can get up to number 96. So, bowling Twitch API. This was cached, apparently. And so we, we were kind of like interspersed. So we have Twitch API, um, image building and CRUD API. All this was cached. Builder step seven wasn't cached. Uh, let's see, EI, API, Builder, three, four, five. And one, it's all cached. And then the copy on Builder step seven Okay, so builder, that's this. So this stuff was cached, and then the copy. This is the caching Docker layer, it says. Uh, so I guess that is working right. It is being cached. Step two of the builder. Copy from planner. So this step. And then run cargo chef cook release recipe path is also cached. Work our app is also cached. So the um, like the work DIR that's parameterized with the name from the argument is also cached. So it's not invalidating the cache. Uh, doing the same thing here, like with the copy, where we're including the name of the, the service from the arg. Anyway, maybe this is better. It did complete during the ad break. Uh, what happened here? Okay, builder five. We're actually doing the thing in task worker. Like it would be great if there were, if there are no changes in task worker, we didn't do anything. It was all cached, but not quite there. So a lot of things did happen, but it wasn't too bad. Right. And if I run it again without having changed anything, there, it takes a few seconds. Um, then what about from, from here? Good. Looking good. Okay, so. Uh, let's clear all this. And try <laughs> to do the thing that I was trying to do this morning before the stream that was not working, which is simply to save the absence of a thumbnail. Now I've still not solved the performance issues here with client trying to, you know, save. Uh, but 
it does work itself out if I just do this. All right, back to the network tab. We do a put. Now we still get this response, which is very strange. What's up with that? In fact, this, this definitely had to work before, right? Because the number of times I have saved from on the stream view has been quite a lot, quite a lot of times. And, and, right, while I was looking at the get one, right, and its response and, and changing something that weird was going on there. Um, that's not the only place. It's also in the put, right? Which is in um, stream update. Which is using the correct stream detail view from resolve video clips, right? Content type application JSON into response. So, this, none of this has changed. Um, what has changed? Uh, what about Nginx? What's going on with Nginx? Anything, anything in the logs here? Do I see the put? There's the put. And then the subsequent get. Um, so what's up with that? What if, let's do this. Uh, let's take the, the get request, which also has a very interesting response payload. What if I right click and I uh, copy as uh, curl? All right. So some stuff in here that doesn't matter because this cookie stuff doesn't matter. This is from some other app. Uh, yeah. Interesting. So what does this do? Hey, look, we get just normal JSON. How about that? So what's going on, Firefox? <laughs> All right, so let's try something else. Uh, what happens if we go into Chrome? Oof, so red. Uh, let's move that over there. Network. All right. Save. Still locks up. That's not Firefox's fault. It's uh, probably probably my fault. We don't get a little prompt at the top saying the script is 
<laughs> making this page slow like we, there was in Firefox. So how long is this gonna take to um, unfreeze? Let's see, where are we currently at anyway? Uh, inside of uh, emotion. Um, I did look at this in, um, I did profile this actually before the stream as well. And basically it looks like there's something that's causing, that's forcing like re-render after re-render after re-render, after you click save. And uh, I'm not sure why. It's a mystery to me at this point, but uh, hey, there we go. It did it. All right, so back to network. Hey, the thumbnail came back. That's a bad sign. Uh, so here was our put and the response. Well, that looks good. Hey, look, it's it's the JSON. Um, I wonder, maybe maybe this is a red herring. That is, maybe the issue is the dev tools in Firefox. <laughs> and the reason the thumbnail is not getting reset has nothing to do with that. Um, right, so if you look at this response do we have a thumbnail in the response we do so we're failing to wipe out the thumbnail so if you look at the payload thumbnail is set to null so I think this is probably a bug in the way we're doing updates cool um, specifically so I do this update stream change set and we take the body thumbnail and it's option string. So <laughs> so the issue is this does not model what's actually happening because there are three cases from for what the front end is going to do. It's either going to send a string because we're setting the thumbnail to a value, or it's gonna send null. Maybe, maybe it shouldn't send null. Maybe it should be sending an empty string. And then null should only signify um, where, hmm. so I think what the front end do is doing though, is that it's the, the key is just not present in the JSON. If the, uh, field is unchanged, right? If we change fields and thumbnail is not one of the fields that we change, let's, hold on, is that how that works? If we look at the request here uh, for the put, no, no, it includes everything. Okay, so this is not doing, um, hmm, okay. Hmm, why was I thinking that this was going to give like an incremental update? Maybe that's a different data provider um, that I'm used to using that has that behavior. Anyway, so for the data provider we're using uh, on the front end, data provider, uh, which this is just for the most part wrapping RA data simple rest. Uh, I guess this sends the whole thing. Okay, so that means that when I wipe out the thumbnail, it's sending a null. It probably shouldn't. It probably should be an empty string. 
But even if it is a null, hmm, let's think about this. So the update, the way the change set is working is that we pass this to set. And because thumbnail is none, because this is an option of a string, so that null gets translated in, deserializ in deserialization to a none. Thumbnail URL is none, and so that field does not get set uh, in this update. Um, I see. Okay. Hmm. Now the underlying field in the database that we're setting. is not nullable. Okay, interesting. So when I was setting up this API, I think I was under the assumption that an absent field meant that we would skip it. And that's so that that's what this does, right? So if any of the fields aren't in body for the things that are, I think these are all options. Yeah. So you'd be able to just elide anything here and it wouldn't update the underlying uh, column on the row. But that's not what the front end is doing. I think what do I want to do here? If I want to be able to erase the thumbnail, I think what I'd rather have the front end do is send an empty string. It shouldn't be sending a null. I think. So, to the front end. Well, that was uh not a complete waste of time. Got some, you know, maybe further optimize the, the build process. But uh, it's a bit of a rabbit hole there, trying to figure out why the thumbnail was not getting cleared to come down to a front end issue. So in streams. And uh, I think this is the first time I really tried to clear the thumbnail field. Uh, so this is why this has not come up before. So in edit, we have a text input. We source this thumbnail. What options do we have on text input? So this is coming from um, React Admin. It's their text input, not like material UIs. Uh, there's probably like an empty. No. Some of the React admin uh, UI elements have like a empty value thingy. Let's uh let's look at the docs. Okay, so search for text. Text inputs props. Okay, multi line resettable type and also common input props. Is React Admin the same as MUI? Hey, uh, Pavonis, how's it going? Um, so, React Admin is a kind of like CRUD, so create, retrieve, update, delete, admin UI framework essentially, and their UI elements use Material UI. But what it does is it provides you with um, like pre-baked views for 
listing records, editing, creating, uh, options for like bulk actions. So like this UI is using React Admin and it's like, so I told it like, here are the kinds of resources I have and it populates the nav. I've told it, um, I, I have my own like edit view and I use components from React Admin and it provides like state management and a pluggable backend, well not backend, but a pluggable like layer that I can then tell it how to talk to my backend API. Yeah, like pre-built with my functionalities. Yep, exactly. It, it's not a general application framework, right? So it's not something that you would necessarily build any old app with. But if you want to build like an admin UI and your focus is around, I have these kinds of records. I want to be able to like, look at them. I want to be able to like, like here's a list of streams. Um, and I've layered in stuff, right? So like I've added this, uh, this view over here with a calendar, um, which is taking a little bit of work. Um, but you have like filtering capabilities that so you can, you can add in filters. Um, you can select a bunch of records and I have, like bulk actions that I've defined and hooked into it. So it's extensible. Um, so if you need that kind of admin UI, it's, it's, it's something that I've used in the past. Uh, and it is, I felt like it was a good place to get started. I do like for this application, the goal is to eventually have it where there's like a central workflow where I'm like taking the like I start the stream actually through this tool, not through this UI, but through this tool. Um, and then like process the video files, create episodes, do the transcription, uh, all that stuff through like a predefined workflow. And that probably won't be this UI, but this UI is really helpful for like, so I don't have to go directly into Postgres and Redis and other places. I can just have a single place where I can like look at the data and I can do like one off, like let me do uh, silence detection on the stream from, from here, right? Because I haven't built the full workflow yet. I can piecemeal figure out how all the pieces are gonna work and then I can assemble it together. Uh, Pavona says, that's cool. I was looking for something like this a year ago. If I knew it, uh, probably would have saved me a couple weeks. Pavona's yeah. didn't just follow. Hey, thanks for the follow as well. Uh, yeah, it's something that I've used uh, on a couple of uh, work projects over the years. And um, it's, uh, especially if you don't mind Material UI or it's, you know, kind of that admin kind of thing where it doesn't really matter so much what it looks like. It's just to, you know, get the job done. Uh, I think it works pretty well. There are constraints and like how it's set up. Um, so it's, it's something that, uh, like if you understand like, uh, that, uh, it can be a very helpful tool. So, uh, right. I was trying to figure out for text input. Can I tell it to, ah, okay. So here are the common input props for the react admin text input, right? So we have parse and validate, label, helper text, full uh, width, format. Uh, so the default is, see this seems right. If the value is null, then an empty string or value. Take value from the form state returning the input value. Oh, this is the opposite. Uh, parse is, yeah, so this this is why we're seeing that behavior, right? So, so the um, basically the lifecycle kind of interacting between the field value that shows up that's like passed to the material UI text field and the state of the record that's in React Admin that's pulled from the API or pushed to the API. You have these format and parse. Um, uh, props that essentially are that interface between them, right? So format is how it takes the value from the record and preps it for 
the field uh, to surface it, right? So if the value is null, it turns it into an empty string because material UI is not going to like a null as the value for that uh, uh, text input. And then parse generally does the opposite, right? It takes the value, whatever value you're submitting from the uh, form field from the DOM essentially, and turning it into a value that is going to then go back into the record and then back to the API, right? So this is saying if the value is an empty string, it's gonna be turned into a null. Um, and so I don't want that. Um, because, hmm. So there's a couple ways of solving this, right? So I could pass in parse, let's go back to the code. I could pass in a parse to text input here and then have it not do that. It could just pass through the value. Um, that will get me where I want to be, right? So if I just do parse um, and then <laughs> yeah, uh, just do, do that, right? Just pass through the value, then uh, that works. Um, so just like an identity function. Uh, there's gotta be a way to overwrite the existing flow. Uh, are you talking about like what I'm doing now or? Yeah, like I can pass in parts here and that's going to just whatever string value I've input it just get pat gets passed through. Like so, if I go back to the UI now, um, and what was I trying to edit? Um, stream date. This one. This is what I was trying to edit, right? So let's get the Dev Tools back up, Network Tab. Um, so for some context, if you've not seen the rest of this, this form has a lot of fields, um, a lot of data, and uh, a consequence of that is what you're about to see when I click save, which I, I have not yet fixed. Um, so if I clear the thumbnail and I click save, it does hang for a minute, unfortunately. I've not nailed down exactly why that's happening other than obviously that I have a lot of um, uh, elements. Anyway, as a workaround, I can just drop in the debugger briefly. All right, and then, so, see that worked, right? So. Previously, when I went through that flow, the thumbnail was getting repopulated. Uh, well, I wonder how the schema would look like for this. Um, like in the database or the API or something else. Also, I think I found <laughs> a bug in uh, Firefox's current uh, dev tools because this is actually I'm pretty sure this is representing the compressed text, but it's actually working, right? It's actually getting the JSON and parsing it uh, because the UI is working. Um, but anyway. Uh, yeah, the JSON for all those fields. Yeah. If I refresh this, It's, it's busted right now. What if I, do I still have Chrome open? I think I, maybe I closed it. Okay. Uh, I have a terminal. So it looks like this. Uh, let's see. Is my buffer big enough? No. I was gonna go and copy the whole thing and paste it so I could format it, uh, but it's too much. Uh, let's see, what if I, let's go to Chrome. Chrome doesn't seem to have this issue with uh, the JSON 
return uh, compression. So let's see, inspect, network, refresh, said refresh, there we go. Response, uh, there we go, blow it up a little bit. So it's, it's pretty flat. Um, and then I have an array of objects for silent segments. So this is where I've used OpenAI Whisper. Uh, no, sorry, where I've used um, uh, FFmpeg to scan for chunks of silence in um, the recording of the stream with certain thresholds and stuff. So that's that. And then I have transcription segments. This is where I'm using OpenAI Whisper to do trans, uh, like speech to text transcription on the video and identify like in this time from 360 seconds to 398.84 seconds, I said something like, let's get ready to jump into the game. Maybe that'll get <laughs> something. Uh, eh, the transcri transcription's okay. It's a, uh, it's not all noise and it doesn't get everything quite right, but it's pretty good, especially for like then turning this into uh, handing this to uh, like GPT-4 to uh, uh, do like summarization. So just this is just an array of many, 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 many segments of transcription. Uh, no, 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 this is not live. Um, this is from a stream last Monday. That was day 20 of GT New Horizons. So that was last Monday's stream. I, I don't know if it would be able to keep up. Like there would be a lag, right? Uh, but not Im impossible to have it. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. At least the thing I have is not really set up to do live transcription, even if it could keep up. Um, and then just more fields uh, related to the stream. Uh, and then the video clips is just, they're just arrays of objects, right? This, I used FFmpeg to scan all the um, local video files. Like when I stream, I record the stream locally. And um, so OBS just does a local recording and it does like 20 minute segments. Uh, so this is all of those, those video files and like all the information about uh, what the file is called, the video bit rate. Uh, most of this is the same, right? Because it's, they're all gonna be the same format. They're all gonna have the same number of audio tracks, but if there were variations, this would capture that. Uh, yeah, so just a lot of data. Uh, <laughs> or maybe not a lot, depending on your, your point of view, that just gets dumped into this form. And then we have a timeline. Is there a third party thing to do all the voice to text thing? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, there, there are lots of things to do voice to text. Um, I'm currently using a Python library called uh, open or, or no, wait, 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 wait. What am I doing? Oh yeah, 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 that's right. Um, yeah, open, open. AI uh, S P E R. So this was released back in 2022. Um, it's actually in PyPy as like an installable package for Python. Um, so yeah, pip install OpenAI Whisper. And so there's a model that gets downloaded with it. So I'm this this is something that I'm running locally inside of Docker. 
Uh, let's let's get out of all of this really quick. So get out of that. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, that fixed <laughs> the issue with the uh, the thumbnail. Uh, was wondering how JS could do all this to be Python. I mean, the the actual service. So I have the front ends, which is TypeScript uh, and React and React Admin and all that stuff. And then I have a bunch of backend services. Um, so the uh, transcription API is actually a Rust um, package. It's a Rust crate that um, uses Axum to provide an HTTP API. And then what this API does is you pass it um, a set of like essentially file names for where the, the files are for the videos, uh, which track has the um, the, the speech to transcribe, um, what language and initial prompt. So you can, you can feed in kind of some initial stuff to the model to tell it, uh, you know, to get it started, to give it context. And this is all just the wrapper that I do a couple things. I call it to FFmpeg to extract the audio track from the video file. And that audio extraction is then, uh, let's see, read ST, well, STD out from FFmpeg. And then I create a temp file, temp dir for the transcription, audio is there. And so I stream, I pipe the audio into Whisper. So I just run it essentially from the command line. Like all of the stuff I'm doing here, I could have just done from the command line. You know, just like uh, FFmpeg, blah, 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 pipe, uh, whisper. This is effectively what the Rust program is doing. Uh, and then whisper drops it into a, a JSON file uh, in my temporary directory because I'm saying output format JSON. And so then I just go, I verify that the command ran successfully. It's way out of your league, but very interesting. It's it's funny because um, it's it, it's something that it it came in steps, <laughs> right? Of figuring out well, I want to trans. Well, ultimately, I want to have uh, a large language model that will summarize uh, chunks of the stream that I want to publish as episodes on YouTube, right? Well, how do I do that? Well, I need a transcript. Uh, and I tested that initially just manually where I would not even using this because when you, when you upload a video to YouTube, you can set the language and then it will give you, um, a transcript, like an AI generated transcript. So I was taking that and I was pasting that into chat GPT and I was like working on a prompt and then I was like, okay, well, I want to eventually be able to like have a workflow that automates all of this. So uh, incrementally, like finding a piece of software that I could run, in this case, OpenAI Whisper, which is, it's a Python package. It wraps some stuff. I don't really need to know how it works all that much other than that I can run it inside of a Docker container. Um, I just need to give it like GPU access and I can feed it an audio file and then it gives me back JSON that I'm reading uh, here. And then I parse it and then I take out the segments and I do some, you know, data munging and uh, more data munging and like coalescing the segments into like 30 second long segments. Uh, and eventually it just returns the segments as JSON, right? So the front ends, um, there's another layer because there's like a tasking, like a background job queuing thing that I built, but essentially the front end says, Hey, go off and run this. And it goes off and does it. And it takes, you know, um, for a three hour video, it might take like 30 minutes to do the transcription, but that all just happens in the background. And then, you know, a little bit later, there's a thing in the UI that I click um, 
on the transcript tab where it's like check status and then I can load the results once the status is you know once it finishes I load results and that loads in this is actually editable you just have to click in right uh, the timestamps aren't editable but other things aren't yeah okay well uh, so far, <laughs> I've succeeded in making it so that I can clear the thumbnail. Uh, but hey, you know, we got some stuff done along the way, stuff figured out along the way. Uh, somewhere I have a list of things to do. All right. Back to new things. Okay. So uh, let's see. Let's do this and this and there we go okay so the first thing I wanted to do we have we have series we're in one right now <laughs> uh, I want to be able to associate uh, well I want to be able to from the stream link it to a series right so like um, Currently, this is sorted, sorted the other way. There we go. So this is the stream from Friday. And we have some information from Twitch, like the stream ID from Twitch and the stream dates and the duration. So I want a field here where I can select the series uh, is one thing. Um, I guess we can, we can just keep on breaking this down, huh? There are some subtasks uh, in this. So add um, series uh, select to the stream edit. Um, I probably also want in the list view the ability to filter by series. That'll be probably be pretty helpful and should be not too bad to do. Add a filter for series in the stream list view. Um, okay, so on the front end, that's pretty straightforward. That's just like a couple lines of code to do. Uh, on the back end, uh, let's see. Let me look at Postgres. PG admin. I'm not sure. I don't remember if the database, if the table has um, a column for the series. Let's check that really quick. I think I might have already um, known I wanted that, <laughs> so just went ahead and did it. Let's let's see. So uh, episode series streams uh, speech audio URL thumbnail URL created updated transcription silence stream ID stream platform stream date. Okay, so. Um, Topics, video clips, series. Does the episode table have a, it does have a series, good. We did that before, but we need to do the same thing for the stream. So, add a stream ID, uh, no, series ID <laughs> to stream. Uh, table. Okay. Uh, what else? So the update stream, uh, get one and get list. Um, hmm. 
get one, get list, and update. Uh, endpoints to support the series ID. Right, so we need to change the backend uh, to actually like return the series ID from the database and allow the front end to send it. Hey, Martinator. It's been a while since I've seen you over here. It's a cool emote too, what's that? Nice. Hey, Hydrate, I'm doing that right now. Ah. Uh, the Mar 249J, nice. Yeah, time zones. Time zones are a challenge. Yeah, yeah, no, I, uh, <laughs> I can't, I can't put it down. I get, I gotta miss the stream every once in a while, you know, for, for work stuff or just, you know, other things that come up, but uh, yeah, especially these streams. I like working on this project. Uh, okay, so back in stuff. Um, uh, with filter. Might as well do that while I'm there. Uh, I've been pretty uh, something myself, and Sally, there's only so many hours in the day. Yeah, pretty busy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I I also have not been able to lurk in as, as many streams as I, uh, uh, <laughs> especially like, like December. Uh, December was streams all the time. Even though I didn't stream as much as I was imagining that I was going to stream, uh, it's very, very active everywhere. And it's just kind of, you know, <laughs> more and more stuff comes up. Uh, but, you know, I try to get in lurks while I, where I can. Okay, so anything else that I need to do to associate the series to the stream? Series select to the stream edit, add filter for series and stream list view, add series ID to stream table. I'm not gonna do these in order. I think probably what I'm gonna start with, let's save this. Start with the um, updating the table. Uh, so we got migration. Speaking of lurking, thanks for the lurk, Martinator. Uh, add playlist ID to series, yeah. So ultimately, like the point of adding the link from the stream to the series, besides just like organization, is that I want to be able to find for a given episode that I'm generating, which playlist that needs to be added to. So for that to auto-populate, auto the stream that the episode is from needs to have the series because the series has the playlist ID for the playlist on YouTube. So that will link, like link everything together and make it so that the, for every single episode, when I go to publish it uh, onto YouTube, I can auto grab the playlist ID that that episode needs to be added to. So that that's, 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 what, that's what this is driving towards. <laughs> Uh, let's see, do I have, uh, you know, I'll just, uh, control shift P, run task, migration generate. Uh, so this is gonna be add series ID to episode. Yeah. I think so. Uh, and then Credit API is the service that this is happening in. 
and that makes a new folder. Mm, excuse me. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Alter table episodes, add column series ID. Oh wait, oh right, 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 that's episodes. That's not what we're doing. <laughs> Actually, let me, yoink. Uh, we already did this. What I wanna do is, rename, to, uh, oops, to uh, the stream, right? Because I already have the thing to link the episode to the series, but I don't have the thing that I need, which is the one for the stream, that's right. Okay, so uh, to, but not order. We don't need order here, so we'll do that. Uh, to stream. Is it stream or streams? Streams. Did I, did I do the thing that I like to do? Yeah, it, it's, it's helpful to determine when you're naming tables or naming anything, <laughs> is it is it singular or is it plural? And all of these are plural, okay. Uh, do I wanna add a foreign key to series? Uh, alter table streams, add constraint. Uh, are the constraint names specific to a table in Postgres, or is this a global name? Postgres constraint. Constraints, DDL. Okay. Check constraints. I don't think I've ever used the check constraint. Actually, uh, we're doing like a foreign key, primary key, foreign keys. Yeah, references. Could do that, except we already have an existing table, so we're altering it to add that. Can you give it a name? I mean, I already know we can because we have, in the other case, F name, followed by identifier, followed by the constraint definition. If you don't specify a name in this way, the system chooses a name for you, which can be a real problem in uh, future <laughs> database migrations. Is the identifier scope to the table or is that global? I guess, you know, let's just find out. So I'll just call it the same thing, FK series ID, but this will be on streams instead of episodes. Uh, and then the down migration should be very similar. So I'll just copy paste the table streams, drop column series ID, alter table, Streams, wanna make sure that the name is updated. Uh, there we go. And that makes it really easy to drop the constraint here in the, the down migration, because we just have the name. So, control shift P, run task, migration run, CRUD API. Uh, yeah, that's normal. Just complaining about the database has no actual collation version, but a version was recorded, whatever that means. Sure, it's fine. If I go back to PG admin and I go to streams, so can I refresh from here? Maybe right click table, there we go, refresh. So streams, there's a series ID. Constraints, uh, not visible there. What if I click on stream properties? Uh, maybe under constraints here. There we go, FK series ID. It's got an OID. Okay, seems fine. What if 
in the, in the spirit of testing us, what if I do um, revert? FK series ID of relation streams does not exist. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Well, I'm going to take a break here. <laughs> Get some more water. I'll be back in just a couple minutes. And uh, we'll continue working on stuff. BRB.